Hi, it is time for you to learn about the basic components. Well, I've already told you about resistors a while back, so all is left is capacitors and inductors. They are quite simple really, and I won't dive too deep, I promise. The capacitor theory is quite simple really. Atoms have cores and electrons that turn around them. Electrons have negative charge while cores have protons that are positive. Opposing charges attract each other while the same charges repel each other all thanks to electric fields. That's all you need to know for now and a bit more. See, you can't just shove an electron into a conductor because there is no room and they repel each other and push back. Unless you bribe them with some positive charge like get into your cell. Dad, I'm not getting in there. <laughs> Are you afraid? I'm not afraid. I can't stand this guy. I'll tear him apart. You don't want his blood on my hands. The cell beside you is filled with girls. Hello there. Okay, I go in. Yeah. Or like, imagine hackers work alone. Unless you are a great target and they all work together to steal your data. Take it away, James. That's why you should use ExpressVPN, the sponsor of this video, to protect against hackers. Go to expressvpn.com slash electroboom and get three months of free service and encrypt your data and make it secure. Hide your location and bypass the filters to access the data you need securely. Back to you, Mary. I made a plexiglass container with a thin gap between the surfaces and filled it with neodymium magnets with the same direction so they repel each other. I learned it from Cody's lab. Now imagine these are electrons repelling each other. Let's assume this is the neutral state of a conductor and electrons and protons are equal and we can't fit any more electrons in there. Like there is five electrons on this side. Now imagine this magnet is a positive atom core stripped of its electrons. If we bring this positive charge to our electrons, it pulls them close to each other so now there is more room on that surface and more electrons can fit there, like six now. And that's how capacitors work. You have two conductive surfaces overlapping but not touching, isolated by a non-conductor called a dielectric that can be air or better. And now if you put a power supply across the surfaces like a battery, you can push electrons into one surface and suck them from the other surface. Of course the electric current is defined as the reverse of the flow of electrons. The electric force between these charges keeps them together. So even when you disconnect the battery, the capacitor keeps its charge. And just like that, you can charge a capacitor. Of course, it only takes a fraction of a second to charge, which depends on the amount of Did I connect it backwards? I think I did. You would think having two conductors side by side wouldn't care about the voltage polarity. Which is true for some capacitor types like ceramic, but apparently in some, like electrolytic, it matters. See, capacitors are made with different structures like ceramic, electrolytic, tantalum or others, and each one has its own pros and cons. The chemistry and structure of some of them, like electrolytic or tantalum, makes them polarized. It's like having a very diode across your capacitor. As soon as you put reverse voltage or too much positive voltage across your capacitor, it starts conducting extra current and blows up, which makes for great pyrotechnics. Let's look at it again. In any case, a charged capacitor has this potential energy in it where the charges like to get together but they can't because of the dielectric and are held in position by the attracting electric fields. But as soon as you put a load across it, the charges say, you can't stop our love, now there is a new way. <laughs> he was a burden, tell me about it. <laughs> Whoop. Stop. Well, I didn't care, but I can't just let things penetrate me. So the charges pass through the load and the capacitor discharges. Now you might ask, why would we need solid dielectrics between plates instead of air? There are three good reasons. One is that they make sure plates won't touch. Second is that they can isolate against leakage and arcing much better than air, so you can bring the plates much closer. 
and third similar to ferromagnetic material that we make our inductor and transformer cores from because they improve magnetic fields good dielectrics also improve electric fields based on their electric permittivity and result in higher capacitance now you might ask what's a good reason to bring the plates as close as possible well, the electric forces between charges is very small over long distances, so we have to bring them close for increased attraction. And that increases the amount of charges we can put in a capacitor and so increases its capacity. But too high of a voltage over too small of a gap will break the dielectric and short the plates. That's why every capacitor has a specific voltage rating. And also, the larger the plates, the more charges can fit in them and so the higher the capacitance. So the capacitance is equal to epsilon which is a constant for dielectric permittivity times the area of the overlapping plates divided by their distance. The unit of capacitance is farad named after Michael Faraday and the amount of charge in coulombs you can put in a capacitor is equal to its capacitance times the voltage across it. So more voltage or more capacity means more charge. Now you might have heard some idiots say that when there is a DC signal like this it hits the capacitor plates like this and gets blocked while an AC signal can zigzag between the plates like this and pass through well that's wrong when you place a DC voltage across a capacitor the voltage across it rises as the charges flow into it until the electric field in the capacitor is the same as the field in the battery and their voltages are equal. And as you know, like temperature, the electric current only flows from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. And if the voltages on both sides are the same, then there is no current. So when you connect the DC across a capacitor, it charges to the same voltage and the current stops. But when you have AC, you constantly raise and lower the voltage which pushes and pulls the charges in and out of the capacitor. So if you look at your capacitor as a black box, it looks like that the electric current goes in one side and out of the other side, then returns in the next cycle. So from outside, it looks like an AC current is passing through the component, although the actual charges never pass through the capacitor and only accumulate on the plates. So that's the capacitors for you. Now let me tell you some interesting wisdom around them. What was I gonna say? All right. A capacitor is like a cup. Its voltage rises as you pour charges into it. Its voltage rises faster if you pour more charges per second or more current into it. This is when the capacitor blows up. Although the current through a capacitor can change instantly, the voltage across it cannot jump from one value to another because it would mean in that moment of time the current was infinite because some charge went into the capacitor in no time. And that just doesn't happen in real life. I told you the charge in a capacitor is equal to the voltage across it times its capacitance. So a tiny bit of change in charge can change the voltage across it by a tiny bit. If you have watched my previous Electroboom 101 episodes, you know that current is equal to the amount of charge passing per second. So, in a tiny bit of time, only a tiny bit of charge passes. If we rearrange these, we see that the current through a capacitor is equal to its capacitance times the rate at which the voltage changes in time. Voltage and current both being a function of time. Well, this is pretty much all you need to know about capacitors. So for example, if you shove a constant current into the capacitor, then the rate of voltage change is constant, meaning that the voltage changes in a straight line. That's not straight. Straight, straight line. Never mind. Or if your voltage changes like this in time and you can approximate a piece of it as a straight line, then the slope of that piece times the capacitance gives you the approximate current that runs through the capacitor between these two points. It's all so simple, wink. If we have a sine wave voltage across a capacitor, then at zero crossing, we have the maximum voltage change, a positive rate here. So we have a peak current positive here, and here we have a peak negative current. And at the peaks of voltage, the rate of voltage change is zero and so the current is zero in these spots. So the current through the capacitor looks like this, always leading the voltage by 90 degrees. 
Okay, we have had enough for one episode. I'll give you more details as we go forward into Electroboom 101. Next stop, Inductor. So make sure to like my videos and subscribe to my channel. And if YouTube is blocked in your country, then use ExpressVPN. James? If YouTube is blocked, then they won't be able to see this message. Then somehow tell the blocked people to use ExpressVPN and go around the filters to access what they need securely. You can use ExpressVPN's app or software on your phone or computer with a click of a button. It encrypts your data, secures it and transmits it through one of their many servers from 94 countries to choose from. So it looks like you are connected from a different place. And most importantly for me, when I travel and connect to insecure Wi-Fi networks, ExpressVPN makes sure my connection from my computer to their servers is safe. Imagine if my passwords were stolen. So go to my link and get three months free. James out.